Hey, 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 welcome back to the Flow and Flourish podcast. I am your host, the Capacity Coach, Nicole Roan, and I am so glad that you could join me today. If this happens to be your very first time coming across the podcast, then welcome to your group of sister friends who are talking about and listening to ways for us to navigate through the world of regular life and business. So whether you are working in a career in a corporate space, or if you are running your own business or a combination of the two. Here we focus on how we can be able to flow and flourish effortlessly between both of those roles on top of wearing all the many hats that we do as moms, wives, sisters, friends, breadwinners, all of those things. We talk about juggling all the hats, being the one and our friend, family and work groups and how we can manage our capacity so we can show up in excellence in every single one of those spaces. Now, if you are no stranger to the podcast and you have been part of this listening crew, welcome back, friend. I am just as happy to have you back. I do not take it lightly that you spend your time, energy, aka capacity, and listening to this show because you are the reason that I do this. So before I jump in, I do want to let you know that this is not going to be like all of the other pretty episodes. And I say that in air quotes because this is just raw, real recording because it's been heavy on my heart and mind today, which is why this podcast is coming out so late in the day this Tuesday. So give me some grace, y'all. I've been struggling trying to decide if I was actually going to put out a throwback or record something new. And I actually took the time to listen to one of the episodes that I wanted to bring back around for you all. Because I kicked off my boundary series this week on Monday, and because I've been having these internal and external conversations, I thought that it was extremely necessary for us to really talk about capacity and what it means, which is why this is Check Your Capacity 2.0. If you know me, then you know that I believe a firm foundation is everything. And if I can be 100% honest, I've been running from capacity since the time God told me to talk about it. For the last year or so, I've been trying to put capacity in the work-life balance box, and it's just not that. Capacity is something totally different, and I remember, I think it was over the summer, it finally hit me that work-life balance is a direct result of capacity. And because we are in this new year and many of us are in this new me, new year phase, I want to make sure that each and every one of us are set up for success and really understand capacity at its core so that we can apply it in both our personal and professional lives so that we can create work-life balance, work-life harmony, work-life integration, whatever it is that you call it. The thing is though, You can't do that if you are not managing your capacity. So today is all about that. When I went back and listened to the original episode on how to check your capacity, I gave a very textbook definition, which of course has evolved over time. And so I wanted to circle back to that and talk about what I know it to be because I've been walking the talk. I mean, I have literally been almost forced, I want to say, to do the work to manage my capacity, which is why I couldn't talk about it from a place of knowing because I wasn't confident in it. But now that I've had the ability to not only manage it on my own, but teach other people how to do it, I know that God has given me capacity so that I can teach it to everybody else to do the preventative work of becoming overwhelmed, of becoming burnt out, of being like me and ended up in a hospital because you've been operating beyond your capacity for so long that it's become normal to you. And let's be honest, many of us are doing that, especially during this pandemic for the last two years. And the truth is, many of us were operating beyond our capacity way before this whole pandemic even hit. This has just made it a whole lot worse 
But unfortunately, many of us are still not even aware that we're operating in that realm. And I say that because in several conversations that I've had today, and even prior to today, I've had people reach out and say, you know what, I was overwhelmed, I was stressed out, I wasn't able to concentrate, and I didn't know what to call it. But because I've been listening to your podcast or because I've seen you live or because I attended a conference that you spoke at, you helped me understand that what I'm struggling with is my capacity to the point where people are literally reaching out to me daily saying, when I hear the word capacity, I think of you. And that's exactly what I want. I'm no longer running from being the trailblazer of teaching everybody what capacity is and how to manage it. I'm embracing it. And I'm doing that really in hopes that we can make these different shifts in our mindsets and our actions and our behaviors and our relationships and all of these different areas of flow that I talk about. So my updated or should I say elevated or upgraded definition of capacity is the amount of time, energy and resources that you have available to carry out all the things that you need to get done in your personal and your professional life. It's what you spend your time on, who you spend your time with, what's constantly swirling around in your brain. All of those different things make up our capacity. And that includes your values, your needs, your relationships, your money, and how you manage it. It's all of those different things. And when we lack capacity or are at max capacity, how we make decisions is impacted significantly. Specifically, one of the first things that comes to mind for me is decision fatigue, right? If you've never heard that before, it's a real thing. I need you to look it up because when you are just over it and you have been making decisions about work, about your family, about money, about your career, about your business, about relationships. You don't want to think, you don't want to do anything, and you start to just let go. And in some cases, you just give up all hope. And I know that's not where any of us want to be. And when you mix all of that with the stress and anxiety of being the go-to person in your friend and family circles, being the strong one that everybody leans on, feeling like you don't have the time to take care of yourself, sprinkle in a little bit of unfulfillment in relationships and or work, and the rest of the competing priorities that you have, it's hard to function, let alone flourish. So I need us to make a collective movement to intentionally understand what it is that we value today. What is it that you need in this season? Who or what do you need to walk away from? And get honest about what is going on in our hearts. You know, I have that heart flow pillar that talks about your relationships, your values, and how all of those things pull on our heartstrings and impact our decisions. For us as women, especially operating at max capacity is an epidemic. And we're constantly seeking these external resources, aka retail therapy, thinking that being busy is equivalent to being successful or taking care of everybody around us because that gives us false confidence because of our need to be seen, heard, or validated. That has to stop in 2022, and we have to take back control of our lives, both personally and professionally, and that starts with managing your capacity. One of the things that I've learned over the course of this last year and a half or so is that capacity is just as much about what's going in as it is about what's going out. Have you ever heard the term garbage in, garbage out? If you are filling your capacity with other people's problems, other people's values, and things that do not make you the best version of yourself, such as toxic relationships, toxic work environments, unhealthy habits, then what you put out and give out to the world, including the people that you love the most, is going to be garbage too. I talk so much about how essential it is for us to take inventory of the people around us, the things that bring us joy, the things that stress us out, the things we need but are afraid to ask for because we're afraid that the needs won't get met. 
and how all of that plays into our capacity. If you are filled with other people's stuff, you have no room for your own stuff. You have no capacity to do the things that you need to do. So we have to be aware of what's coming in and how it impacts what we're putting out. Another thing that I hear all the time, and I'm sure you've probably said it yourself, is I don't have time. Pump your brakes because you do have time, but you're choosing, and yes, I said choosing, to give it away or put it towards things that are not in alignment with who you say you are, want to be, or what's important to you. So managing our capacity is about aligning what we value, determining what's essential versus important, and creating some boundaries around that. So you can have all the time management skills, planners, all of those things in the world. But if you're not managing your capacity and understanding how what's going on in your personal relationships, aka heart flow, is impacting how you spend your money, aka cash flow, or how you're constantly battling imposter syndrome at work, and taking on all the things to prove your value and that you belong there, and then over-promising and under-delivering because you've put too much on your plate, aka workflow, and now you're stressed out, anxious, beating yourself up, can't eat, can't sleep, so now you're constantly at the doctor's office or staying in the hospital because it's impacting your health flow. Like all of these are intertwined and make up your capacity. Time management is just one component and capacity is so much bigger than that. It's an inside job and it's a continuous process. It's a daily choice to bring awareness and align your thoughts, actions, people, and environments that you put yourself in to your priorities and values, period. It's about being intentional about your resources, your time, your energy, your money, and then walk in a talk to make sure it's all going where you want it to go. In a nutshell, it's about making you the priority and building your life to support you around you as the priority, as well as the values that you have. I've talked in other episodes, lives, on other people's podcasts about how we need to give ourselves permission to check in on our values and update them accordingly. And I say that because too many of us are walking around holding values that were just handed down to us or because society says it's what we should value. And because of that, our capacity is filled with things that don't even really matter to us. But because it's what we know, because it's what we're accustomed to, because we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, we're spending our time, energy and resources in jobs that we don't like and relationships that we've outgrown. And dealing with stuff that we know good and well doesn't align with who we are, who we're becoming, or what's best for us. And this is where that honesty comes in, right? We have to learn how to be honest about what it is that's going on in our hearts and have the tough conversations, do the hard work, make the necessary shifts so that we have the capacity to show up fully as moms, wives, business owners, leaders in our careers, all of those things. But you can't do that if you're not willing to do the work to manage your capacity so that you can flow and flourish continuously throughout your life. And I think the biggest thing for me is really being able to do that and lead by example and teaching the people around me how vital it is to be authentic and live authentically. Now, I hear that word tossed around all the time. So I want you to ask yourself, are you living authentically? Are you living in alignment with what it is that you say you value? Are you being honest about what's working and what's not working in both your personal and or professional life? Because if the answer to those questions are no, I guarantee you, you are at max capacity. And there's no judgment because I've been there. I get it. Like I said, over the course of the last 18 months or so, I have been tested and had to take my own advice. And it's not easy. It's not easy to make change. It's not easy to have those hard conversations. It's not easy 
to cut off relationships or walk away from jobs that are literally killing us from the inside out. But until you do, you're always going to feel like you have no work-life balance. You're always going to feel like the world is on your shoulders. You'll always think, if I just had better time management, listen, that's not it. It's your capacity. It's what's taking up your capacity. And you have to get to the root of it. You have to. And I want that for you. And the good thing is you don't have to do it by yourself. There are so many of us who are suffering in silence because we don't think that anybody will understand what we're going through. We don't want to feel weak for asking for help. We're so used to being able to carry it all and deal with it all. But there's a season for everything. And if you're listening to this, it's not by accident. It's your season to flourish and to become the person God created you to be. You just need to get around some other people that are going to speak life into you. You need to surround yourself with others who are on a journey similar to yours so that you can know you're not alone because you're not. And even if you feel that way, you don't have to be. I'm here. The Flow and Flourish community is here. There are a multitude of other Facebook groups, other coaches, all of that good stuff. So don't go at this alone. Now, I didn't want this episode to be extra long because it's late. I got to get up and go to the gym in the morning. I have this Dreamers Conference that I'm preparing for. I got a whole lot of things that are happening. So I am going to wrap this up. If you take nothing else from this conversation, I need you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that capacity is not just about work-life balance. It's about understanding how what's going on in your heart, what's going on with your health, what's happening at work, what's going on with your money, how you're leaning on your faith, How all of those things work together to give you the capacity to show up in excellence and do all the things you need to do every single day. Capacity management is a lifestyle and it's a journey. Yes, it's about time management. It's about self-care. It's about understanding your values and your priorities. But more than anything, it's about being honest with yourself about what you need, what you value, what's important, what's essential versus important, and learning how to align everything that you do every day to those things. I told you before, and I'll tell you again, if this is something you need or want help with, I am here. You can go right to my website and book your complimentary capacity check-in. You can come on over to the Flow and Flourish community on Facebook. You can check out other episodes in this podcast. Just know you don't have to do it by yourself. Also, if you are in the Chicago land or Indiana area, I am doing a live in person capacity workshop at the Dreamers Conference on Monday, January 17th. And I would absolutely love to see you there so I can break down each of these pillars even more to help you on your capacity journey. Also, I mentioned that I'm doing a Weekly series on boundaries. Listen, you do not want to miss this. I'm going to be going over the different types of boundaries, some of the signs that you have some loose boundaries, and then wrapping it up with how to set or reset boundaries as you head into what I hope to be your best year yet. I pray that this episode has blessed you and that you have a better understanding and foundation about what capacity is and what it is not. You know I want to hear from you, so DM me, connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, wherever it is that you get your social media fix. I would absolutely love to hear from you. For the rest of this week, I'm going to be doing some replays on some of the episodes that I think will be really beneficial as we head into this boundary series that I'm doing for the rest of January. And you can catch that live or even the replays on my Facebook business page as well as on YouTube. I pray that you are staying healthy, that you're looking at capacity differently after listening to this. 
And as always, I thank you for allowing me to be your capacity coach. And I look forward to helping you create balance between your personal and professional life without ever having to sacrifice yourself, your family, and what matters most. I'll talk to you soon.